face on the sun today. Mm -hmm. What's up guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today, I'm going to attempt to rebuild the power steering rack in my 1988 Toyota Supra. Um, I already have it out of the car, I did not film the removal. I covered most of that process in the video where I did the front subframe bushings. Pretty simple to remove, just undo the tie rods from the knuckles, undo the two bolts on each bracket that hold the rack in. The trickiest part is getting it off of the knuckle here. Um, just take the bolt out of the knuckle, let it sit with some lube, and you should be able to pry it out. Pretty straightforward removal, and then obviously undo the hoses here. Pretty easy. Um, but the hard part is rebuilding this thing and rebuilding it properly. Now the reason I'm rebuilding it, not only because the channel's name is Poor Man Mods, and it's the cheapest way to go, but people have so many bad experiences with remanufactured power steering racks that you know, most of the time when people get them, they leak or they are just bad. So I figure if it's going to leak, I might as well make it leak myself. So the rebuild kit was like 50 bucks. I'll have a link for that in the description down below. But I figure I'd rather spend $50 and make it leak myself than spend 300 and have someone else make it leak. So uh, let's go ahead and try to rebuild this thing and uh, see how we do. I will be following the factory service manual for this. I'll have that linked in the description down below. And Boost Rodeo also did a pretty good video on this. He has a lot of good tips and tricks in that video. I'll link to his video as well. So big thanks to Boost Rodeo for tackling this first. Um, but maybe this video that I'm producing will add to that and make it easier for you guys, uh, you know, combining our two videos by giving you as much knowledge and visual aid that you can get to rebuild this thing. Hopefully you guys won't have any issues. So. Now that I have this out of the car, the first thing we have to do is get the tie rods off. Now I'm gonna leave the outers attached to the inners. These are all new. I did these when I did the front subframe bushings, of course. Uh, but we're gonna get this over to the vise and get the inner tie rods off the rack. All right, gotta get these boots off first. Come on. Can you tell it was leaking? Holy shinola! Now, we have to get this ball joint. Oh my good god. This thing is literally full. Holy shit. All right, next thing you have to do, there's these tabs that you hammer over onto this ball joint of the inner tie rod to lock it in place. Get a flathead or a chisel and hammer them back. And of course the rack is moving. Oh my. Now I'm not sure on the exact size of this, but I have an adjustable wrench to hopefully break them loose. They do make a special tool for this, but special tools are for squares. Now we can try the other side. This one, I don't think has ever been replaced. I don't recognize this at all. So apparently I've never done this inner tie rod because this is just a funky looking design to me. I've never seen that. First thing we're going to take off is this bolt and cap right here. There's a couple special service tools that you're supposed to use to get this off. But uh, if you take a 24 millimeter bolt, it fits right into... Now it's still hot for me wanting it! It fits right into the hex. And what you can do, you can either get two nuts and jam them on there and try to take it off. That didn't work for me because they kept slipping. So I welded a nut on there and hopefully it pops off. So the head of that bolt is a 24 millimeter or you could buy a 24 millimeter Allen socket. You can do what you choose. There's a jam nut here that you're supposed to loosen with a special tool, but I'm gonna see if I can just loosen the whole piece with this and my impact. Oh, there it goes. Beautiful. Who needs a freaking special service tool? There's a spring in here. 
Now we're gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers, stick it in the hole, spread them pretty hard, and you can pull out that piece. Now there's another hex bolt right here. We're gonna use the same Toyota factory service tool and uh, hopefully remove it. All right, the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing these lines from this housing right here. What I'm gonna do is try to get the lines completely off of the rack and the housing itself rather than just doing one side. I'd like to take, I'd like to take everything apart and clean it. So we're gonna start off with this. I broke some of these loose. Some are still very stuck. I would highly recommend letting these sit in penetrating lube. My preferred lube right now is Seafoam deep creep, that stuff is really good. Then I torched everything. I didn't get anything red hot, but I put a lot of heat into everything and let it cool. And that got some of the things loose. Um, but then on some others, my line wrenches were actually still rounding them off. You definitely want to use line wrenches on these regular wrenches. You're bound to round them all off. But I even, on this one, my line wrench rounded it. So I used these uh, vice grip nut busters. These go on three sides of the nut. They are incredible. I've never used these before. My friend Mark let me borrow them. So I recommend getting a set of these and they might save you a lot of headache. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get this one off first, then you can move on to this one and then to the last one. So I would recommend, you know, although you're watching this video, take a picture of how everything goes together. Take a picture of the orientation of this line. You don't want to mess it up. Of course, of freaking course. Now all these flares, they are 12 millimeter. Let's see if I can get this one off. Beautiful. All right, there's one. Oh, okay, that's the one that's rounding. Let's put the nut buster on. Yes, the nut buster always wins. I highly recommend a set of these. I'm gonna have to get a set for myself. And we got it. All right, now we're gonna remove these two 14 millimeter bolts that controls this uh, pinion or valve assembly, whatever you call it. Ooey, it pooeyed. Ta-da. That spring should be independent of that assembly. And that is what moves the rack. Pretty stinking cool. Oh no. And now I made a mess. All right, we got it all cleaned up. Well, we took it outside and cleaned some of the power steering fluid off, but now we're gonna remove this C-clip that holds in the stopper so we can get the actual rack out. it might pop out just from going upside down. Yeah. Oh, okay, that works too. Oh! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You're a bad girl. All right, so we tapped on this housing a bit, and we did get this sleeve out, and then this guy came out. And I... Yay, there you go. Put it, put it back up on camera, we're still going. There you go, explain it. Explain what you did. So we laid this on the ground, What's and this? We have a 3 8 extension and we put this on the shaft itself and kind of pile drive it into the ground. You could do that or use a hammer and then this should come out. So then just lay those out like they should be. Yeah. Got another thing to remove out of here. There is a metal spacer and a seal right about here. This is a 3 quarter inch socket with a long extension. We're going to stick it in there. 
and you're gonna be hitting on that metal spacer and pop the seal out. Did that go through it too? So there is a tight tolerance in here. That's why there's a Toyota special service tool. So to take up the extra slack, I'm gonna put some duct tape around the socket. Hey! Look, Look at that! Yeah, perfect. The tape got the socket stuck right in the seal. And there you have it. Beautiful. All right guys, so we got pretty much everything apart. There's still one more seal and one O-ring right here in the rack housing, but other than that, it's pretty much all torn apart. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could go about doing this. You could replace every single component that comes in your rebuild kit which this is only seals and O-rings, no bearings at all, which is a big disappointment. Um, you could decide to replace every seal and O-ring or just replace the stuff that you know or think might be bad. So there's a couple ways you could look at this. You know, if you buy a remand rack, you have a high probability of getting one that's junk and leaking right out of the box. Uh, I've heard so many horror stories of people buying racks from Napa, AutoZone, Rock Auto, and they're all crap. Um, so you're going to spend three or 400 bucks and it possibly leak. Um, you could rebuild this rack yourself, replace every O-ring seal and bearing, put it back in the car and it might leak. You could only replace the things that you know are bad and the things that weren't bad before, maybe they are bad and then it's going to leak again. So there's a high probability of leaky leakage when you do this and it's kind of all risk analysis. And also, this is poor man mod, so we're going to try to do it the cheapest and easiest way. Now, this little guy right here, the pinion, there are four Teflon seals on it. And to my knowledge, they were not bad. I did not see it leaking. Um, and there's a bearing right here, and it seems to be just fine. I don't think I'm going to replace anything on this pinion. Now, some people might be screaming at me, some people might not, but these seals are not the easiest to replace, and you can mess it up. So, as I mentioned earlier, Boost Radio did a good video on rebuilding this rack, and in his video, in his video he shows you how to replace these Teflon seals. I don't think I'm going to do it. And also, the bearings for this kit, they are either not possible to get, or they are very expensive. Uh, Boost Radio had uh, part numbers for some bearings in his video description, and the one bearing that might be bad for me is the bearing at the top of this valve housing right here. Right now, it's deep in here. I can't get it to spin. And that's a $52 bearing going by the Toyota part number. So I'm only gonna try to replace what is bad with this rack and maybe not replace, but even fix what is bad. So I'm gonna leave this as is. The only thing I've done to this unit was I took a file and cleaned up the splines right here because they're all full of rust and crud. But I'm not gonna do anything else to this. Uh, I'm gonna take that risk and uh, we're gonna go with it. So the next thing that I'm going to do with this rack is get this bearing and seal out and see if I can figure out why this bearing won't spin or see if I can get a different replacement bearing for it. Because like I said, this is a $52 bearing and I cannot justify that cost at all. If I'm going through all this work and I have to spend $100 on the rebuild kit when I could have sent it out and got it rebuilt for slightly more, eh, maybe that's the better option. So let's get this bearing out and uh, see what's gonna happen. All right, so to get this bearing and seal out, I've got a seven and 11 sixteenths socket. Looks like a pretty good fit. I'm gonna whack it out, whack it off, see if it comes off. Oh my. All right, I've got my absolutely terrible Harbor Freight A-frame bench top press. I've got a 18 millimeter socket in here. Let's see if we can press it out without causing any damage. Perfect. That's how it was orientated in there. 
Let's see if I can save this bearing. Here's the bearing. Um, it did seem to loosen up a little bit, but it still feels really rough. So I'm gonna spray some penetrating lube in there. See if I can get this thing to feel any better. There we go. I guess for some reason it just wasn't lubricated. All right, lastly, let's get this O-ring and seal out of here. I've got a pick. That's pretty simple. There is a little lip right here. Right here that looks like it's for a seal puller tool. There we go. And that went flying, but now it's out. All right, I think this will be the last thing that we're removing and probably the first thing we're going to replace. This is the Teflon seal on the piston itself. Very similar to the Teflon seals on the pinion. This one could be bad because the rack was leaking. So I'm going to replace this one, but not the ones on the pinion. So be very careful not to damage the piston itself. And here's the seal. It's not rubber, it's Teflon, it's hard. It's a little bit flexible, but it does not stretch well. So there is a trick to installing the new one. And you also wanna make sure your teeth and everything are okay on this rack. Clean it up really good and make sure it's not scored or scratched, anything major like that. If it is, you might have to just buy a new rack. But this one look, is looking all right to my very unprofessional, untrained eye. Okay, in the rebuild kit, at least the one I got, there are four Teflon seals. I got four of them right here. The one that's gonna go on this piston is the smaller one. If you hold all four of them next to each other, real nice, you'll see that one is just a little bit shorter. And that's the one that's gonna go right here. All right, I made a homemade stove at my shop. Uh, put some water in here and got it pretty much boiling and put the seal in there and that'll warm it up and loosen it up and hopefully make it a little easier to install. Here is Toyota Special Service Tool 6229. This is a seal installer. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic cut up. Got the idea from Boost Rodeo. And basically you're gonna make this into kind of like a cone shape to slide your new seal onto. Cause you don't wanna stretch these too much and you get this to be just about the size of there and hopefully slide it on. It's probably not gonna be the easiest thing in the world to do. We're gonna certainly try it. Got some ATF right here. We'll lube this up. And this should be warm and slightly malleable. Trying to get this side just on top of here and then slide the seal down and hopefully get it in the groove. Ooh. I got it. Sweet, but we're not finished yet. Now you need to compress this thing and make sure that it stays on. To make sure this thing compresses back down, we're gonna put this sleeve back over it. And then I'm gonna hose clamp it. We'll get the clamp right over the seal. tighten her down. We'll let that sit for a little bit like that. And uh, that should unstretch what we did. And yeah, we'll just let it sit like that for a little bit and then we'll move on to the next step. Let's install some new seals, shall we? We're gonna be installing the seal and O-ring that goes right here. Just, you know, save your old seals so you can line them up. These are the right ones, so we'll uh, Put a little bit of ATF on these things to lube them up. And you wanna make sure your work surface is clean and everything is clean. Dirt is the enemy of these things, so you wanna to try to keep them as clean as possible. And this is a seal driver kit. Usually works pretty good. I don't have any confidence with how I installed this seal. It was very difficult to install, even with using this tool. It just doesn't look right. Uh, we'll see if it leaks when it goes back together, but uh, I'm not trying to damage the seal. 
I followed it for about a half hour. <sighs> we'll get the sewing ring back on. Now we can get our old bearing and new seal back into this housing. According to the factory service manual, this bearing does not get greased. And it's feeling better now that I let it soak in lubricant and moved it around. So, let's get the seal lubed up. Flat side with the numbers on it are going to be at the top here. So it's going to be orientated like this. The spring side will be facing down in there. All right. Can't really see it, but I did get the bearing back in. I did have to use my little press again to get it in. So now I got the bearing and the seal in, and the bearing moves again. Yay. All right, remember that seal and spacer that was way deep down in here? That's what we're gonna be installing next. So here's our spacer. We'll get it a little bit lubed up. Not sure if it matters though. And then the seal. We're gonna install the seal this way and you want the spring side facing that way. And something tells me that it's not gonna be an it's not going to be fun installing this one. Hopefully, it'll go in somewhat straight. Okay, so I think you know when the seal is all the way in, when you don't hear that spacer bouncing around. So, shake weight, shake weight. If you don't hear any jiggling, I think you're good. All right, this next part probably won't be too fun. Uh, I wrapped the teeth of the rack with electrical tape. That's what the service manual says to do. And now we're going to install it this end in here. Um, should be pretty fun. So we're going to pour some ATF on this. Lube it up and shove it in. Hopefully I can get this tape off when it's installed. Oh my. Hey, look at that. I can get all this electrical tape off. All right, we're ready to install the seal on this side. It's gonna go with the spring side facing in. Put some electrical tape around the end just so you don't damage the seal upon installation. And make sure you lube it up. Ooh. Mother. Fucker. I broke the seal, I think. There we go. Now that we have the seal on, take your electrical tape off. You can put the spacer up against the seal. And we'll put a little bit of ATF on the sleeve here. And then we're gonna put it on like so. I think we can take an axle nut socket and tap the sleeve in the rest of the way. When you hear that tap, it should be fully seated and now we can put the snap ring in. Boom, that end is all assembled now. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Okay, so a little bit of an issue. I followed the service manual and hooked up my brake bleeder to these lines, uh, teeing them together and pulling vacuum, there's no change in pressure. So that means the outside seals are good. But when I hook up the vacuum to just the control valve side, the pressure does drop. And they're saying that that is an issue with the Teflon seal on the piston itself in here. I don't know if there's anything I can do about it. I really don't want to disassemble this to fix that seal. I think if it does leak, I don't think it's gonna leak fluid outside of the rack. So at this point, I'm almost, I think I'm going to 
continue with the installation and put it in the car and if that ring does leak see what happens either way it's going to come apart if the thing leaks so i think i'm just going to see what happens and maybe it'll be a learning experience for me and for you uh but i think i'm going to go ahead and finish the installation even though it was leaking from that seal i replaced it uh, i did everything right with it so i don't know if maybe you know there's some leakage going on like scoring in the rack itself i'm not sure I think that will affect maybe the, the steering feel, but I don't think it's going to leak outside of the rack and allow air to get in. Um, so, not super happy with it, but I'm going to go ahead with that and we'll see what happens. Before we go any further, we need to put some grease on the rack and the teeth itself. Uh, you need to use a poly fortified grease. I'm using the Valvoline Full Synthetic Molly Fortified. That's what Toyota calls for. I don't know what it means, I'm just following their instructions. So we're going to be using this acid brush and applying grease to the teeth. Now we're going to put grease on the pinion here. And we'll line up the teeth with the piston and put this in. And we can put this o-ring on, take the spring and put it into the control valve. Make sure that this o-ring is coated with some ATF and then put some ATF on the Teflon seals here as well. Then on top of the spring you're going to put this seat, like so. Alright, now we're going to put some blue Loctite on the bottom threads of these bolts that go into the housing. I'm not exactly sure why. The factory ones didn't have any, but the manual is calling for some Loctite. Check out this Loctite. It's kind of like a chapstick bottle. Instead of a liquid tube that you squeeze, you turn the knob down here and it forces the gel out. It's super controlled and easy. Have you used your grease? Oh, you have. I see the lid off. I heard that. Ew, my god, child. Alright, at this point, I'm going to tighten down the hard lines. If you are going to do this job, I recommend getting a ratcheting 12 millimeter flare wrench if you can find one. Alright, got the rack upside down. Now we're going to install the bearing on the bottom of the pinion. And this is where we're going to have to set preload. I'll pre my load and I have two Poor Man Mod special service tools for this. Apply some Loctite to two to three of the threads. Damn it, Bobby. Get some blue Loctite on here. All right, now that there's some Loctite, we can put this bad boy back on. And then we're going to torque this to 11 foot-pounds. So I have all the adapters on my little torque wrench. I have it set to... 11 foot pounds. All right. Use a torque meter, loosen the bearing guide nut until the preload is within specification. 5.6 inch pounds. 3.9 3. to 5.6 inch pounds. This is like uh, my front wheel bearings on my Toyota, where you're supposed to crack them down to like 22 foot pounds and then like loosen them up and, and then. Get them hand tight. Yeah. So, according to the factory service manual, you torque it to 11. That specification, and then you loosen it, and then you're supposed to torque it back down to 5.6, between 3.9 and 5.6 inch pounds, which I can't feel that. So, we're going to crack it loose. And like Tony said, this is similar to the wheel bearing on his 8.6. We'll do that. There you go. And then we install the jam nut, and you will need a very, very large adjustable wrench to tighten it, which you will not be able to torque it to a specification, or you can make your own 42 millimeter crow foot wrench that you can put 
on a torque wrench. It's beautiful. Four, 42 millimeters inside here to go on the jam nut, and then you can put a torque wrench on here. This is very similar in design to the Toyota factory service tool. Okay, so the factory service manual says you need to torque this to 41 foot-pounds, and you want to use a torque wrench that is 13.9 inches. This is close enough. And my design of this tool is, from what I can see, close enough to the factory tool. So uh, we're going to try to torque this bad boy. If you want it done factory right, take it to a service factory dealer yeah, in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> so basically, I made this tool just out of some stock metal, um, cut a square in here with a 42 millimeter gap, and it goes around the jam nut, welded a nut here, and uh, we'll see if we can torque this to 41 foot-pounds or if it breaks. It's turning. I need like three people for this. Oh no, it's spreading! Oh, I got 29 foot-pounds. We're getting closer. Yeah, that's almost close enough to call it a day. <laughs> I'm launching, I'm launching. Yes! Oh! 38, that's close enough. Yeah, that is close enough. Now we're gonna install this guide into the rack. Make sure you grease it up really well. Drop that down in. Then we're gonna take the spring and put that in the guide. Put some blue Loctite on the threads here. They're gonna want you to torque this to 18 foot-pounds. Got our Fred Tech Pormia Mod special service tool in there. We'll torque this to 18 foot-pounds. This is a digital torque wrench, so I can see my live torque output right here. Eighteen. All right, I've got a torque angle gauge here. I've got it set to 15 degrees right now, so we're going to loosen it until it gets to zero, and hopefully it, it works correctly. All right, now we're gonna loosen this up by 15 degrees, hopefully. The longer the breaker bar or wrench that you have, the easier and more precise it is. So you don't have to exert that much for it. So this next step, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I guess it's people that were smarter than me that came up with it. So they want you to turn this left and right a couple times, just go through the motions. Then they want you to completely loosen this again. until the spring is no longer working. So you can kind of hear the spring click, but I guess just loosen it all the way. So I guess we just added the preload there. And then it says to tighten it using the special service tool torque meter until the preload is within specification. And the specification is 7.8 to 10.4 inch pounds. I don't have a gauge that reads that low, so like we did before, we are just going to go by hand. Or then it says to install the jam nut. Then we're gonna do the same process we did before with our homemade crow foot wrench. We're gonna to torque this jam nut to 41 foot pounds. That's all we're getting. Good enough. All right, now I guess is a good time to try to install this. I'm not sure if we'll have to manipulate these lines or, or what. I know it doesn't like to fit the best. Might have to bend some things. The last part of this rebuild process, basically, is putting this dust cover on. Now you can reinstall your inner tie rods and outer tie rods I'm not going to show that in this video. Uh, this is for the rack. And if you've rebuilt this rack and can't install the tie rods at this point, you probably shouldn't be doing it. So this rack is officially uh, rebuilt, or at least I replaced the parts that I think were bad. And uh, I'm going to be ordering new inner tie rods, or at least one new inner tie rod and new boots. Boots are super important. Make sure you have good new boots and good clamps, because that's how these racks fail. 
It's by getting dirt in them. So make sure you have good boots. And yeah, she is done. Let's get her installed and see if it leaks. You're most likely going to need an alignment after this, but what I did here, I centered this as close as I could. Uh, so I have two and one eighths of an inch of rack on each side. So I'll leave it here, get the tie rods installed and uh, the alignment shouldn't be too far off. So I got new boots for the rack and uh, this wasn't the easiest thing. So there are different boots depending on what year super you have. Um, some say universal, and if they're universal, they're universally wrong and they're not going to work. Rock Auto lists two different years, at least for HC Delco. They have a through August of 88 and then a from September of 88. The sticker on my car says it was made in September of 87, which means the through 88 boot should work. Well, the difference is the diameter of the rack. The earlier rack... The earlier rack is supposed to have a larger diameter, 2.3 inches. So the earlier boots are supposed to fit snugly around the rack. When I ordered them, the through 88, the boots were a half inch too big and there's too much slop and they wouldn't seal at all. Wouldn't work. So either Rock Auto was incorrect or this rack has been switched around. So I had to go and order the from September of 88 boots, which is 1.8 inches smaller and those fit around the rack and seal. So, a uh, little tip for you there, measure your rack before you order boots, and if you order boots, make sure you can find the inside diameter of the boots so you don't waste your time and money. And that boot over there, the inner tie rod is so big that it actually hits the boot and it like just doesn't fit that good. It's such a weird design. Not really happy with these boots, um, but we'll see how they work when I put this in. Got a little Harry Potter scar on my forehead. So I got the rack back in the car, uh, hooked everything up. It went pretty smooth. Turned the car on and ran the rack back and forth, bled the system, and there were no leaks. Now I didn't put the wheels on the ground, which that will add some load to the system, but I'm pretty sure my rack is good to go. I think if it was going to leak, it would probably leak now. I ran it back and forth probably 20 times and did hit the steering lock, so that did put some load in the system. So I think we're good to go, and I'm super excited about this. So um, I wasn't too confident in myself because I've never done this, and I know a lot of people have some issues. But I guess if you take your time and follow the factory service manual and follow the tips and tricks that I gave you in this video and also what Boost Rodeo did in his video, you should be good to go as well. So um, it's definitely a little nerve-wracking, but if you have 50 bucks, I highly recommend giving this a shot rather than sending it out and getting it rebuilt for a couple hundred or risking another rack if you have the money and the time so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learned something and i'll see you next time thanks